Hello and welcome to another episode of the Medic Trust plugin. Um, today we want to talk a little bit about a new feature that's been added to the uh, Trust plugin, and this is the uh, Timber Trust. And uh, to start off with, I just wanted to pull up a model here of a uh, existing uh, uh, hip roof study that I did not too long ago, and added a little bit of a, <coughs> a porch, or at least that's the idea. So with these uh, glue lamp beams projecting out here from this wall and then uh, held up by these posts, we have a spot where we can uh, theoretically put a timber truss uh, porch. Uh, to start off with, just showing you here, um, if you go into the global settings <coughs> and go to materials, right now this is the only option really that affects timber trusses, and that is the... Um, timber truss washers and you can basically specify whether they're standard or hardened washers and the hardened washers are a little bit smaller in diameter than the standard ones so that affects the look and feel of the truss a little bit and of course all the other options uh, will set layers and auto assign materials but we won't worry about that right now okay <coughs> so just like the other trusses you go here click on the truss icon and <clears throat> you'll see this new icon that should be lit up. This is the timber truss icon. Go ahead and click that. And then go ahead and just click. All you need to do is select two points. And you'll start with your left point first. And then you go to your right point. And you want to select the out to out truss span. In other words, <clears throat> the out to out distance. As soon as you do that, you're going to get this uh, preview screen that pops up with a bunch of parameters that you can adjust here. <clears throat> and the nice thing about this is it will uh, show you kind of an outline of the truss and the bolts and the plates. And so you have a nice uh, look and feel of what this is actually going to create. <clears throat> so within this, we'll go ahead and set this to a 612 pitch. Again, you can set a number of things here, uh, overhang. Uh, for instance, we set that to zero. Notice the others I didn't change. You can set that to zero as well. Or you can set that to whatever you want. Let's just leave it at 12 for now. <coughs> this little option here is what's called the heel depth. And on with you, when you have a truss overhang, as you can see here, this, this top cord member is coming across uh, and it's notched right here or at least the bottom cord is notched to allow the top cord to pass over it. So you can adjust that thickness. So if we set that to four inches, you'll notice that the bevel or the notch is less, or the scarf cut, I guess, is less on that bottom cord, which is making that uh, piece of top cord passing over the bottom cord a little thinner. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. I'll just go ahead and put four inches here. <coughs> Again, all of these you can set the size of the of the members. I think we'll just stay with everything we've got here for now. You can set the thickness of the actual width of the uh, members here. The heel height you can adjust this, and you can see as you do that that raises it up and adjusts the plates accordingly and the bolts. Uh, we'll set that maybe at ten. And the plate width, you can play with this a little bit. Just depends how you want your plates to look. Four inches sounds about right. Your plate thickness is how thick the plate is. Quarter inch is fine. You can set the bolt diameter. And these are kind of your standard uh, imperial sizes, five eighths. Um, and granted, you can't really see very well, you know, the change in size difference here on the preview screen. But once you uh, <coughs> actually generate the truss, you'll see it. It will show that. Uh, bolt spacing, we'll set the bolt spacing between the bolts. As you can see, you can set that to whatever value you like. And really a lot of this has to do with engineering, um, and which actually this uh, timber truss feature does not have yet, and eventually will have. Uh, but for now, you know, this is kind of more of an aesthetic thing, and then, you know, once it goes to engineering, you can have that adjusted. So we'll set the bolt spacing there at the edge distance. And you'll notice here in brackets says plates. And so that is setting the distance of the bolt from the edge of the plate, uh, both directions. So 
if we change that visually it just makes sense when you play with that so so you can see it's it's pushing that away from the last bolt there and that's setting that distance and then the bolt end distance is the distance that the bolts can or the nearest they can get to the ends of the timber members so if you set that to say five inches you're going to see a change here and you'll see where the bolts are moved away from the ends of the timber <clears throat> and that's of course to you know prevent uh, splitting out of the timber members so well for now let's leave it at two um, we'll get here into the multiple rows of bolts on uh, the next go around but uh, you can change the rows of bolts the number of rows of bolts and you can also change the number of bolts per row and right now I have it set from one to four if you go one you can see and you get one bolt which is probably not going to work for us here two might work uh, let's just go with three for now <clears throat> so you know you can play with all these parameters you can watch what happens here in the preview screen bottom line is is you know you can leave it as it is it's fairly simple straightforward you just hit submit and there's your truss <clears throat> so as you can see it draws it out it creates all the bolts all the washers all the nuts um, one thing you'll note though is that look where this truss got positioned and the reason is because when you s position the truss with those two points it will set the center line of the truss not the edge so let's go ahead and just delete that real quick hit this again hit this again and instead of selecting these ends or corners we're gonna s I've created what I you can see here is a construction line that's the center line of that post down below so I'm just gonna s select that intersection I'll reach across here and get the full out out span right where it lines perpendicular if I can get that to do that there we go and we'll save the save the same settings just hit submit and of course it keeps your settings now you can see that is centered over that post which has been inset about a half inch from the end of the glue lamb beam okay so <clears throat> the other things to note here are this is created as a component but it's actually inside of a group and the reason why I do that is because you know at some point we may add some advanced options where you know you have the truss component itself but then you also may have some other features or you know parts and pieces that are part of the assembly but may not be part of the actual truss component so you know if you want to get rid of that outside assembly group you can just explode it and then you'll be left just with the truss component but to show you kind of what I mean if we click on this now you can see that right there up there we have the component and let's say we wanted to you know create a copy of that we'll bump that back eight feet okay and then so now we have you know two instances of that component and they're all part of the assembly for the uh, timber truss timber trusses so anyways that's just uh, it's kind of nested in there right now and you know I may change that feature but for now it seems to make sense so uh, yeah this is so this is a king post truss timber truss um, <clears throat> another thing to note is the group or the uh, right now I have all of the uh, bolts and plates being positioned on the roof MPC layer and you can turn that off of course and uh, the timbers are all on the roof truss layer okay so you can see that as well alright so let's try let's delete this one out let's try a different types of trusses now so for now we'll just click the corner since it's easier. It doesn't really matter where we're positioning it, we're just testing out the features. So back to the preview screen. You now uh, can see that there's three different types of trusses you can uh, use. There's the queen post and there is the how. And basically, you know, you, you go as the span increases, you're gonna want to increase the or decrease the panel length which is the distance between you know these sections of the truss 
And so basically, as it increases, you go from a king to a queen to a how, just depending on you know how much that span is. Uh, so let's go ahead and submit, and you can see you've got all the plates drawn out, all the bolts in there, and you've got yourself a how truss. <coughs> now that looks like too many bolts, so you know you could go back in and adjust the bolts. But let's go back in, and let's create a how truss. And mind you, this is a 24-foot span truss we're drawing right now, but you know you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can make this a 40-foot span truss if you like. Um, let's go ahead and just play with these numbers a bit here. We're going to go pretty blocky on this truss, so we're going to bump it up to a real thick, heavy-duty truss. Now you can see that kind of messes things up there, but we'll adjust things accordingly. Okay, and let's go, let's see, 812, just to get those spread apart. <coughs> now, we are going to increase the plate width to, say, 6 inches. And in doing so, we now have enough room to add a couple, another row of bolts. So now we have two rows of bolts, as you can see. And we're going to change this edge distance, say, to 1.5. And okay, so now we're looking like that. So now this truss is pretty heavy duty, as you can see. Um, you know, probably way overkill for the span we're talking about here, but just trying to demonstrate, you know, the ability to create different configurations, different bolts, different plates. Um, there's just all kinds of options you have at your disposal here to create whatever you want to create. Um, so now you can see you've got a very heavy-duty truss with lots of bolts <laughs> and uh, you know like I said this is complete overkill here but we're just trying to demonstrate it um, let's actually draw the same truss let's go ahead and do a queen post and <coughs> let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete those overhangs just so we can show that off and queen post truss and you know you can do as many rows of bolts as you need and you know thicknesses I mean that would be way overkill but let's also this time just for interest of trying all the options out let's go to a three quarter inch bolt and you know this is going to be ridiculous but Okay, so now you can see we've got zero overhang, a queen post truss, and some massive three-quarter inch bolts, two rows. And you can see also here that, um, you know, when I've selected three bolts per row, down here on the um, bottom cord, and there's a little algorithm I have in place, it's adjusting the number of bolts, you know, to increase it, <coughs> because usually you have, you know, the down here you end up with needing more bolts than you typically have I in this uh, hook you know connecting to the top cord so anyways I, I won't go into all the details of why I'm doing that but uh, just just engineering experience tells me that we're going to need more bolts down here so and you'll also see when we draw the how we end up subtracting one so we don't have as many bolts connecting in the bottom cord as well so there's a little bit of you know well, I guess fuzzy logic that goes into play here to determine how many bolts to put where but the idea is to try to make it as realistic as possible and to give you the user as much flexibility to generate you know the trust that you want so that's pretty much a quick overview of the timber truss uh, feature that's been added recently again it's just right here in the trusses and right there it says timber and you select two points you create your truss and you're good to go <coughs> so please uh, you know send me any questions or features that you see need to be added or any corrections um, I'm always open to feedback and actually feedback is probably the best way of developing this plugin since it's really your feedback that has driven most of it so thank you again for your uh, support and we'll see you again on the next video thank you